Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and the book we are taking a look at today is The Guns of John Moses Browning by Nathaniel Gorenstein. This is not a reference guide, this is a biography of the man. The man who is, uh, by the way, without I think any serious argument, the greatest firearms designer in world history. There are a lot of people who are known for a gun that bears their name, the Kalashnikov, the Maxim, the Luger. There are not many people who invented whole categories of firearms in the way that Browning did. Uh, Browning invented the self-loading shotgun. Browning invented what we know today as the pistol slide. These are tremendous accomplishments that frankly put him head and shoulders above anyone else who has ever designed firearms. Now uh, as for the, the content of the book, I think there is one of the blurbs on the back cover that, that covers this pretty succinctly. So to quote, uh, excellent dot dot dot. John Browning's name is well known today among those interested in firearms history, but few actually know much about the man beyond a handful of anecdotes. Dot dot dot. Following Browning from his birth in rural Utah to his death in urban Belgium, we can see how a changing world shaped his inventions and how, in turn, his inventions shaped a changing world. Whoever wrote that was really good. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I wrote that. I did actually get an early copy of this book from the publisher to review, um, and they asked me for a cover blurb. And that is an entirely honest cover blurb. Um, I think this is an extremely well, well written, well researched, well put together biography that does in fact trace Browning and give us some insight into what was involved in all of this. How do you get, how do you do this much invention, have this much of an impact on an entire field of a mechanical industry. And the reality is there are a lot of people around Browning that helped make his work possible. Not to detract from his own talent, which was immense, but it wasn't something he could have done alone. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, born in, as it says, rural Utah, uh, it wasn't even the state of Utah, it was Utah Territory at the time, uh, he had basically no formal education but an incredible mind for geometry uh, geometric shapes and mechanisms. He designed these things in his head primarily, which is just amazing. Uh, he and his uh, several of his brothers went into business originally uh, with a sporting goods store, and they sold guns that were invented by John Browning, which is in fact how some of his designs came to be found uh, by larger companies like Winchester. Now Browning's early work um, really cool. The guy really just transcends this whole portion of American history, starting up literally in the, the last remnants of the Wild West, designing lever-action rifles for Winchester, uh, and then transitioning to... Uh, he, he moves a lot of his work into Europe. He goes to the uh, Fabrique Nationale factory in Belgium, and the book does a really good job of explaining how he hooked up with FN. There are a lot of uh, of anecdotes and sort of mythological stories about what exactly took Browning to FN, and Gorenstein does a really good job of explaining the reality behind it. Uh, with FN he would go on to design just as many extremely successful new guns, the FN 1900, the Baby Browning, the FN 1905 pocket pistols, uh, and then his work sort of transitions again from the, the dawning age of semi-automatic pistols, which he largely helps propel, to the American war effort in World War I, where he designs like ha like every self-loading firearm that the US military used was a John Browning design. The Colt 1895 machine gun was his. The Browning model of 1917 water-cooled machine gun was his. Um, and a massive improvement over all of the other machine guns that were in existence at that time. The Browning automatic rifle was not the first automatic rifle ever developed, but it was far and away the best uh, of its time. It was a mechanical wonder developed quickly and effectively. Uh, from a guy who started off basically wearing a cowboy hat making lever rifles. It's, it's a fantastic story um, of, of everything that Browning did, all the way through uh, to of course his ultimate death um, working on what would become the Browning high power. So if you're interested in finding out some of the backstory behind a really interesting historical figure like John Browning, I highly suggest The Guns of John Moses Browning. It's a really well done biography. Uh, cover price is $28. At the time of this recording it is on Amazon for $24 or $25. Uh, it is hardcover. I should actually have checked this before I started recording. Uh, 323 pages, including a nice substantial bibliography, 
there are a couple pages of illustrations in there of reproduced photos. Normally we do a flip through of the book, I figure there's not much point because this is essentially all text. Um, anyway, uh, it's all text, it's all very well done text, so check it out. I'll have a link where you can pick it up in the description text below. Thanks for watching.